our greatest players are not going to be playing at home again. There's so much hype in and around this game. It just comes off the back of such great performances that we've seen this year from the All Blacks. Now Bell ends up on the tire. And here's a chance for a pity. And the worrying thing for the All Blacks is they haven't even touched the ball. He swings it wide this time for Hooper. Looking to hold him up. And he's got the try. What a half it has been from the Wallabies. Now Christie gets it wide. McKenzie. Koto Katoa, good evening. Welcome into the breakdown where well, there are fresh injury concerns for the All Blacks, Brody Retallick and Braden Enor. But just how bad are these injuries with the Rugby World Cup opener just 33 days away and the squad announcement? The 33 that will represent the All Blacks at the Rugby World Cup will be named live tomorrow on the breakdown at 5 pm. So who's played their way in? Who's played their way out? We discuss it all in afternoon rugby down in Dunedin. Jeff Wilson, Sir John Kerwin, and Mills Mulliana. How did you three all pull up uh, today after an afternoon match? I just have to tell you that my responses will be going through you tonight because I'm not talking to these two. What? This is what happens when you have an afternoon game. Well, well was... you, went, you went really dog. Once we said not... you're Ian Foster, <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. Oh, hold yeah. on. Jason yeah. Ryan and I'm yeah. Joe Smith and we started putting our team down. You just went like all... Uh, hold on. Narcissistic, you started uh, if I am saying Ian I've Foster, got the last call. If I oh, am no. Ian Foster, I'm smiling right now because I'm undefeated in 2023. And I'm just sitting there, I was challenging you guys to come up with your very best. You wouldn't Look, tell us your last two players. <laughs> well, yeah, I got to 33, and then I decided to I'd take me mate. another 24. That's the 32. OK, That's look, let's, let's start from the start, though. Let's talk about Dunedin first and foremost, because if you're going to play a test match in the afternoon, why not do it in Dunedin? Perfect. Because it's we the warmest I've ever been. The, it's the warmest. You, you enjoyed it because Delightful. you weren't quite as cold, but it was a remarkable atmosphere down there. There were so many kids around. It was a fantastic occasion, a great way to send this team off because that's what it was for the public towards the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, a lot of celebration, wasn't it? And, and also, I suppose, the match, you know, given the fact you know, the All Blacks came back, we won the way they'd sort of won. Some of the, the, the younger players had been put under pressure, but... Also, nice and hard and fast track out there, JK. I mean, some of the some of the skill level from from both teams was actually outstanding. It always is down there. That that roof has been a. It's always a good game of rugby when you think back to all the test matches. Yeah, but I think being an afternoon test match, Kirsty J, JK Mills, it, it changed the dynamic of who was going. All of a sudden, there was more kids than I've seen in an All Black test for yes. a long, long time. And we saw the day before at the Octagon. There's a real enthusiasm around this team right now. You know, they've started launching some fantastic campaigns of bringing, I think, the community back in and closer to the team. And we experienced that in Dunedin. Ian Foster said after the game he was stoked with that win, given what they came through. What sort of mental strength can you gain from a game like that, Mills? Oh, huge. I mean, considering they were down, what is it, 14 points at half-time, right? They, they weren't getting their, their set-piece right. Um, they're getting penalised off the park. Um, you know, the tackles, they made so many tackles. To come out in the way they did in that second half and, and really start to nail those things, get their game together. I mean, they were, they were feeding off scraps in that first half, weren't they? And they were making a lot of mistakes, sort of. Um, so they weren't able to get into that sort of flow. That was that was that would have been pleasing for, for Ian Foster to come out and those guys really perform. Yeah, like for me, it's, it reminded me a lot of the, you know, the pre-215 World Cup, when that side, some days would have, like last weekend, they'd have 10 minutes and they'd put 25 points on. Yesterday, you thought, they're down and out. It's not our day. They're down 14 odd points, and then they just make a few changes, stay patient, come back. And I thought that was, I thought that. I mean, you walk away, don't you? Question curse. Foster, you know, walks away going, how good is that? We had nine starting players not playing in this game. All right, so it was always going to be difficult for the group that went out there to start this test match. And remember, they're playing against a full-strength Wallaby side. That was the best team that Eddie Jones had fit and available to play against the All Blacks because he knew it was important for them to get a performance. Now, they probably deserved a draw out of that game. Yeah. If you think about the way that they played no, and what they... They did, they did deserve a draw. A draw. They, they I, honestly, not. they were the better team clearly in the first half yes, and they were in I'll control of the contest. They got it to a point where 
they made some mistakes in the second half. The big thing for me was is that everyone talks about the bench today, about how good the bench were. Aaron Smith, Richie Wonga, they come on and they were, they were very, very good. But at the start of the second half, it was still, still the group yeah. from the first half that had to go and deliver. They changed the momentum. They shifted the, the landscape for the teams to come on and finish it. And in terms of getting the perfect opportunity in dress rehearsal for a tight game in a rugby World Cup, that was it. But I also think... You, you can't underestimate the sort of preparation that's involved in this. A lot of guys haven't played. You look at the, the day game that, that, that uh, you're talking about, it's sort of, your prep goes out the window because they're so used to, you know, preparing for a night. So you, you know, the night before, you stay up a little bit later, you wake up sort of a little bit later during the day. But the, all of a sudden, when you're playing in the day, well, at 2.30, the day comes around a lot faster. So perhaps for that, for Ian Foster, they have to start considering sort of what that sort of effect had, had on the guys, particularly in that, in that first half. What did we learn from that 80-minute performance? Did we learn that Sam Whitelock has to be a starter for the All Blacks, JK? I thought he was outstanding. One critical turnover in the first half, two massive ones in the second half. There was a couple of players that I felt really, really stepped up. Um, for me, he was one of them. You know, he was always calm. I was down on the sideline behind it and I was watching him in particular, always calm, always saying the right things. And those turnovers were massive. And when, you are, when you're a young guy, right, you look around and you see Sam Whitelock just saying, it's all right, let's stay composed, we need to do this, we need to do that. Like, it would give you the confidence to go, we're going to be fine. Three, three big moments in the game, and one of them, I, mean, I know Artie was the one that sort of got over and sort of held that ball up, but Sam Whitelock was the guy that actually turned him onto his back, and that was desperation because McDermott was, was gone for all money, made a tackle, flipped him over, and that's what, what allowed Artie to get over. I mean, that's, that's just experience here, isn't it? And what we know today is that there's an injury cloud hanging over Brody Retallick. The fact that Guzzler could be out for a period of time. He might miss some time at the start of the Rugby World Cup. We don't know that for certain. That's coming out and we'll find out in the next 24 hours before they name their squad. So, what it, no, 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 but what it means is now that luxury of us having the three, now Sam Whitelock just easily goes alongside of Scott Barrett. No, no, I'm just going back to how we haven't discussed, you said that it deserved to be a draw. Move on from that. I can't. Move on from that because what's important Mr. is that... Mr Whanganuku scored. He scores that. I thought we were going to crack. Well, we, we didn't. We didn't, didn't, didn't score, did he? No, he didn't score. He didn't score. Just on the Brodie Retallick, uh, for any of those asking what's going on, four to six weeks is what we're hearing. That is the reports right now. Four to six weeks on his knee injury. Came off, of course, very early on. And Brayden Enor, who lasted well, just less than a half, sounds a bit more serious for him uh, with his knee injury. Could be ruled out for the tournament. But we'll know more tomorrow. Of course, we live from Napier for the All Blacks squad announcement. Well, it was a very emotional day in Dunedin yesterday for some of the new players and for the old heads. How good, mate? Last one on home soil. Yeah, no, it's good wheels. It's a bit emotional, but yeah, like, yeah, just try to put the emotion aside. Just proud, mate. It was a really good effort. And yeah, just pretty grateful to be able to finish New Zealand like that. What's the actual Dane Coles like behind closed doors? Is he as pesty as what he is on the field? If we wind back the clock, it was uh, head eye tackles when we were playing touch. <laughs> For you as mates, seeing his journey and being witness to it, how proud are you lads? He's got to live the dream for us, if that, if that makes sense. So, we've as kids, we all dream of being All Blacks and um, for him to do it, it's just, I can't explain the words that, you know, like, that it means to us as mates, but he's done us all proud, he's done his family proud, he's done his partner proud, Smeegs, and we're all quite tired and it's, it's, a wicked, it's wicked to be part of it. I got my debut down here, the whole family comes down. And they've been every step of the way with me through the ups and the downs and um, you know a lot of a lot of tears, you know, of you know, if I was ever gonna get there and whatnot. So no, I'm just grateful man to um, get that first cap and um, to do it with you know not all my family's here but most of them are here and even some close mates, it's um oh, I was special man. You know, New Zealand itself uh, holds a very special place in my heart. You know, this, this country's given me a lot of opportunities, um, you know, through 40 balls at the same time, um, as I am as a man. And to have performed you know, out here um, on, on home soil for one last time, I uh, really mean a lot out there um, putting that back jersey, so yeah. You know, our family's a massive uh, backbone into, I guess, our culture. And, you know, this year's a special year of World Cup. And with the bench frame released around New Zealand, you know, our family's, you know, exactly our definition of our bench. And, 
two of them on the field are, I guess, celebrating a good win and also connecting with each other. Um, Me and new partners, new family members, it's, it's quite special and um, it's something, you know, we really enjoy having. Oh, that was such a beautiful, beautiful story. The start of the All Blacks career for a couple of players and the end is in sight for some others, isn't it, JK? Yeah, I always remember um, getting in the side and the, and the team was quite old. Like, I was 19 and everyone was 28, 29. You know, Andy Hayden, who turned out to be a great mate. Rest his soul, you know, Andy Dalton, Gary Knight. And for me, they were legends of the game. I used to be sitting in front of the TV watching them play. And that's what it would be like, you know, for Sean Stevenson, getting to play a test match where you're under the pump and Sam Whitelock steals, you know, balls under pressure. You, you remember it for the rest of your life, Mills. Yeah, 100%. And, and also, the guys that are moving on, I mean, how special that story is. You know, um, the last last time they played on New Zealand, saw all their families, but also to, to bring the whole of New Zealand with them because there's a bigger... <laughs> I suppose tournament at the at, you know coming up in a few few more weeks. So even that this is pretty special in itself. Well, it was a big 80 minutes, wasn't it? Because it was the last chance for some players to show exactly what they've got, and the first for others for these selectors before they name the team tomorrow. Jeff, if we look at who stood out, who had the biggest impact that needed to? Was it Sammy Penny Fina? Did he surprise you? No, it didn't surprise me. It was just a matter of whether he'd get the opportunity before they were naming the side, and this was the opportunity for him, and he really grew into the game. Look, he, he made a couple of errors earlier on, got penalised um, for going off his seat, feet, but then all of a sudden he got himself into the game with the things he was successful at during Super Rugby, which is ability to carry the ball, and then his work at contact, and then defensively all of a sudden he had a bigger impact. So I look at his performance mills, and he's put himself not just in the conversation, I think he's going now on the back of he's that performance and what we might need. I don't want to jump to the gun because we're going to talk about the side later on, but I think for me we saw enough there, enough to like. I want to see him there. Oh, I definitely think he goes now. Um, it's so easy. I mean, we talk about your first cap, right? It's so easy. You're under the pump. You're up against a quality side. It's easy just to hide back and go, hey, I don't, I don't want to touch this. I don't want my hands on the ball. Give it to someone else that's relying. He didn't, you know, and so he really stood up. He, yeah, he'd made a few mistakes early on, but that's what I liked about it, his confidence to be able to say, no, nah, no, nah, I'm putting my hand up and I, uh, I really want to show this, well, show this team that I can lead, you know, with, with ball carries. I think what we're seeing is a style of play that this particular selection committee want, not these two, the real ones. <laughs> um, you know, for me, for me, uh, you've seen, you know, Ioane there, and he's more a number eight that plays six, you know, he's, he's got steps, but... You know, they're very similar. Finau and Frizzell are similar. They're raw boned, they work hard. You know, you need them to take it up. You know, Retallick doesn't have to keep caping up. Whitelock, you've got these guys. And I thought he was outstanding yesterday. Made a couple of first test errors, but I saw him step and like we were down on the sideline and he accelerated and he's a big man with real big acceleration. And he likes to hit people. So I think he'll just grow into that role. And I think he's, yeah, he's, he's, I sort of call it gone from economy to business class, so he's in. We know the squeeze is going to be on the outside backs. What about Lester Whanganuku? Yeah, I, I, an, another big shift yesterday. He just brings, you know, something totally different. When, when they started to get some momentum, particularly around uh, the rucks, you know, he was he was in there. He showed that also during, you know, uh, Super Rugby. He's, um, it just sparks little wee things. Um, you know, he almost becomes that extra sort of Lucy in terms of, you know, um, his ability to get over that sort of game line. But I thought he was active also, coming off his wing, um, showing his face a little bit on the right-hand side. Um, so I think my team, or our team, eh, hey guys? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Fang, and if he goes. Uh, look, uh, I think that, once again, he's a player who showed exactly the way that he plays the game and he put it into the next level. Yep. So his form was great through Super Rugby. That's what we had to go back to. He picks up an injury. We don't see him till this game. And I would say he took his opportunity by showing the strength that he had and his ability to carry the ball through contact, his involvements. I mean, he'll still look at some of the defensive things and like to maybe make some better decisions around that, JK. But I think all of a sudden, when you had to choose, you've got to choose him between other players that compare and this unfortunate injury to Braden Enor, who he was probably competing against, it has opened a door. Now it's just the balance of the side and whether they need him to cover the 13 jersey. Yes. Do they trust him to be that guy, Sir John Kerwin? I'm not sure. But on the back of that performance, he couldn't probably have done anything more in that game to show he wants to be on the plane. Is, does he go into the starter? So he's a big man with beautiful feet. Mills had beautiful feet. And when you've got people coming late and you're stepping, it looks like three yards on television, but you talk to the tight five, and that three yards that he gets you over the advantage line can get you a roll on, and someone scores on the other side. And I thought he did that brilliantly yesterday. So for me, he... Um, 
yeah, he, he it, it's Caleb that I'm sort of, it's Caleb, Lester, I think the other two, Mark Tilly is already there, Sean Stevenson. So for me, he's on the plane now. Hold on, is Sean Stevenson there for you? I don't think so. I mean, Sean Early, defensively on, you know, everyone used to take the mickey out of, uh, out of, out wide, you know, wingers, but angles are really, really hard. And Sean plays fullback most of his, most of the time, and he just got a couple of early angles wrong. He got ahead of his defender in that first try mills, and it's not easy. The thing I liked about Sean Stevenson was he stuck at it and he got better, and he didn't lose his confidence. He had a crack in the second half, and he nearly opened them up early in the, in the first half. So, um, you know, it was, it was a hard night from early, but he, he stayed composed and he recovered it. I don't think he's done enough to get on the plane, though. Potentially a future All Black, if not an All Black for now then, Mills? He hasn't done his case any harm for the next year? No, definitely not. And you've got to remember, he got, he got bought in. He wasn't actually in the original squad. So he's, he's been exposed to the, the, the environment. A lot of guys are moving on as well. He's had a good Super Rugby campaign. His consistency in sort of terms of what he's... The downside for him is there's just so, so many, many quality outside backs. I mean, these, these guys that are missing out, man, we're, we're going to have some classy players missing. Did you like Will Jordan at fullback? I like the way he sort of went, went about it. I mean, Will Jordan's Will Jordan, isn't he? Regardless of where, where, where he plays on a wing or where at fullback, um, he's there every day. But in terms of the makeup going forward, I think Bowden's still our, our best bet there. Well, there was uh, one clutch moment to separate that game, so it wasn't a draw. It was a win for the All Blacks. This is our Musashi power play for today, available at Chemist Warehouse. And it is the Iceman, Richie Moonga, Jeff. Yeah, well, look, you want your best players to step up in the biggest moments. And... He said some wonderful things after the game and the fact that his expectation was that he was entirely comfortable with this responsibility. He felt it was going to go over. That's his job. He knows his job. But we're seeing a confidence out of this young man now as a player in 2023. I don't think we've seen ever in the All Black jersey. For him to come on and to not just make this kick, but to drive the team back to a point where they could win, the decision making before that the way they started controlling territory and they kept building momentum. I think for me, it's possibly one of the biggest disappointments I will have post this year. You know what that is? <laughs> what is that? That's a curveball. So I'm going to give you a curveball. What's the curveball? Right. Do you think he's more relaxed because he's signed overseas? Um, no, I just think he knows who he is in an all-black jersey now. Mature. I think he owns... Yeah. We talked about this all season, about the keys to the car mills, and he owns those now. Yeah. And he's, he is completely comfortable with that. I'm just bitterly disappointed that we're not going to see it after this Rugby World Cup and it's heading off short. Voce di corridoio? Oh, it's been a while. Or are you just starting one? Apparently you can get him out of it. Would you? I made that up. You made that up. <laughs> well, you're the king of Japan, JK. If anyone knows, sorry guys, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. you would know. Everyone like, oh, 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 is he right? Can't get out of it. Sorry. But uh, <laughs> remarkable for me, Mills. If you look at him, he's in complete control of his game right now. Well, this is the thing that we're not privy to that goes on behind the closed doors, right? In terms of the leadership stuff, he's been absolutely handed that confidence from his coaches to say, hey, this is your your team. And you've seen it when he came on. You could almost see that sort of confidence in him. You know that he was nice and composed. He said a few things, and then they started to get a bit of that roll on. So. That goes into a mess. It makes a massive difference in terms of the way he feels that he's not competing against you know someone else, and that's unfortunately what was sort of happening with him and Bowden, right? I have not heard all season who's the best ten. You know, we walk through airports, right, and the New Zealanders will come up to you and say, "Who, you know, who's yeah. the best? Is it Barrett and Wong?" And I haven't heard that because I actually think we've settled on ten and fifteen, right? And they'll be. It'll be Bowden or Will? You know, that's going to be the next discussion. Well, we may have uh, decided who the best 10 is, but people still keep asking who are the best starting locks for the All Blacks. This guy did himself no harm yesterday. Sam Whitelock with KT and Joey. Sammy, fantastic win for the lads. For you, um, being back amongst the mixer, how were the lungs? Yeah, I must admit, playing here, uh, you always know the lungs are going to get tested. And I uh, got out here earlier today and I was like, OK, she's hard, it's going to be fast. Yeah. And it's exactly what we got this first couple of minutes. Um, we were heaving and full credit to Aussie. They just played on top of us and didn't let us breathe. You and Brody Retallick last time that you two, great partnership, uh, world-class partnership, played over 100 tests together, will don the uh, silver fern in, uh, on New Zealand soil. Was it alluded to during the week? What were the emotions between you two? Did you have a quiet word behind closed doors? Uh, we're probably a little bit boring, eh? We don't really <laughs> talk about that stuff too much, but um, I think it's something... I got asked about it yesterday, and I hadn't really thought too much about it throughout the week, um, but it's kind of sinking in now, like, 
seeing everyone's kids run around. The Coles kids are running an absolute muck out there. So <laughs> standard. Um, yes, very standard. So um, I think it'll sink in a little bit later, but I don't think until that next time the All Blacks play at home. Um, I think that's when it'll really sink in and probably a bit of motion then. On your relationship, you two, you're obviously both world-class locks and we've so been so lucky to have you um, as part of this All Black side for so, so long. How does the relationship work? Who's the, I guess, the maybe the alpha dog or what, what are you in the relationship? Um, what do you both bring to that um, amazing locking pairing? Oh, we're definitely different. It's quite interesting watching us uh, in a team meeting I get probably a little bit bored, so I have to write everything down. Otherwise, uh, you know, I'll probably try to hijack the meeting where Brody will sit there and probably write three things down. Um, <laughs> so it just shows that you just got to be you. And, and that's the best thing about uh, Gus and I getting out there. You know, he goes out there and plays his game and, and I do mine. And hopefully both games uh, complement each other. And um, I think we're better when we're both out there. And um, looking back, it's been a long time. I think 2012 was the first time we, uh, we all played together at Eden Park. So. Looking forward to a few more yet, so not getting too sentimental just yet. I want to talk to you about the lineup in particular. Talk me through the first half. There's a couple of times they challenged you there, and how did you get, how did you rate it? Yeah, we we're a little bit shaky at the start. Um, a couple of options didn't really work, and, and that's just test footy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, teams adapt and change how they're playing, and um, I thought we kind of got better as the game went on. Um, you know, I think when we actually finally got into a couple of driving sets, we uh, actually engaged a bit more and gave our backs a bit more space to play with. For you, you were very vocal in those team talks, especially in that first half when the team wasn't functioning that well. What was the messaging that you were relaying to your, to your troops? Oh, it's pretty easy. Uh, you guys know you've been out there. It's actually just trusting our system, uh, trusting what we've been talking about all week and just actually going out there and doing it. Um, you know, Rugby is a complex game if you want it to be, or you can keep it really simple. And um, I think we play our best when we're, we, we are playing simple rugby. And I'm talking about that, like our intent's good, our tackle selection's good, and then obviously our attack flows from that. So um, that's what we didn't do in the first half, and I thought we were better in the second. Not all locks are simple, though, KT. Not, Not all, all locks, locks are simple. simple. Hey, you know, <laughs> you're, you're a lock, Lucy, <laughs> weren't you? you know, like. hey, hey, some are very simple, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> there were a few comments about your spelling, but I won't go there. Well, so. Average. Absolutely <laughs> average. No one can understand that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, we stick together. We stick together. Let's stick together, hey, the locks club. Hey, congratulations on the win. Go and enjoy it, my man. Cheers, Cheers brother. Well Thanks, done, man. mate. Well done. So professional, uh, but a little bit of personality there from Sam Whitelock. That guy is in, there is never any question marks about him, but are there now question marks around some others after yesterday's performances? There were a number of people that came on early and others got subbed off early. What is the gap like now, Mills, between our first 9 and 10 and our second, with Finlay Christie and Damien McKenzie both coming off? Oh, look, I think it's probably sort of created an opportunity now for our 9 and 10 to be really solid, isn't it? It's Aaron Smith and your Richie Maungas, I mean... Um, you you wouldn't want those two to get injured, I, though, would I, you? No, Mills, Mills, we knew before this game who our starting 9 and 10 yeah, were. Yeah. We knew but well before this game. how big is the gap now between the ones sitting on the bench? I, I don't think... Just before Mills goes again, I don't think you can judge our 9 and 10 on this performance when the forward pack itself was vastly different. Like, it's different when you're playing behind the number one forward pack. Yeah. This wasn't the number one forward pack. I think what we can settle on is that if we have to write our starting team down now, we 100% yes. know who that is to play France if they're fit and available. But I also They've got think, no concerns. No, I also think the 9 and 10 that are coming off the bench bring something totally different to the ones that, that are saying. It's Richie and obviously Aaron Smith. You know, when you, you have a, a Christie come on, even a Roy guard in a certain, certain ways. So the makeup now um, becomes a little bit different in terms of what they bring off the bench, which is, I, I think, I think it'll give um, Ian Foster some comfort in there. I don't think you'll ever see Richie Moonga subbed. Not, you know, you have those rotations those happened games. before and he came off this and we I don't think I don't think he will be so. Disagree. I think we've seen already the changes and they've made so, it one totally of the Totally disagree. Benches. You can disagree with totally it as disagree. much as you like. So I'll tell you why I disagree. So did anyone hinder their chances? I think um, Sean Stevenson, like you mentioned before, I think he's going to be an All Black in the future. I don't think he gets on the on the plane. Um, Finlay Christie, I think, is under pressure. I love the man. Obviously, he's blues. He goes hard, tackles. Um, but is he under pressure for Weber? Right, don't know. And got I to think play behind the number one forward pack. How often yeah, has he no, played? No. Yeah, I get, I get it. I'm not, I'm not arguing. I'm just putting the facts out. So, what? The other thing is, Damien McKenzie probably had his quietest game at ten. But you also got to remember, you guys just spoke before about Richie Moonga getting the keys to the car. But he had a few games like that early in the piece. This guy's come back, been a specialist fullback, is coming into an international first five. 
Yesterday was great for him because he actually got a bit rattled, his kicks weren't going in the right places, he was under a bit of pressure, um, but he stayed out there and he actually started to come right in the second half. So that'll be good for him. He's on the plane and if he shows a little bit of form in the World Cup, which he will, you bring him on 10 minutes in a game against Italy for Richie Moanga, he's yeah, going to change bring, it up. You could, you, you could bring him on at fullback to get that, though. You can get that shift there. They've shown their willingness to. We haven't that. taken, we're not taking him as a fullback. Yeah, Remember, we he, discussed this last night. He can play fullback at the international level and he'll have the same impact there we as he could at 10. We cannot take him as a fullback. He's got to come on because he changes the game up. It's an option. He changes the game up, right? I think Comes the, on, runs across the, the field. The most noticeable thing about the, the two styles is, you know, that the whole team has actually adapted to it, right? You know, back in yesteryear, they would have gone, oh, I mean, this is all over the place. And we would have lost that test, um, given how sort of erratic it became. I mean, he's still quality. You know, the things that he does, look at those breaks that he made in yeah. the back. So, But Mills, last night when he started playing what I call that sort of league standoff, which I love because the defence doesn't see it, he wasn't playing with the Chiefs and he hasn't played for a while. So, you know, against Argentina, he'd, he'd accelerate across the field. Someone had cut. He said they weren't cutting. Those little things that really create those moments. But, you know, he'll, he'll go away after yesterday and go, wow, team was under pressure. We're going backwards. I learned from it. How can I get better and I'll get better? You had your sound, Finlay Christie. I just want to ask you two, do you trust him in the big moments or would you rather have Brad Webber? I'd take Finlay Christie. Now, I think that win would give... You know, if, they, if, they'd, if they'd lost, it possibly would have given him another... So, well, hey, here's what... They, he hasn't had a good... He hasn't had a good... Any good service. When he came on against the Springboks, he was actually quite good. He needed to, he needed to be able to... Again, yesterday, same thing. I think you, you they're different them. players. They're different players. Brad Webb is Aaron Smith. He plays that style of game. Finlay Christie is a more he's a more physical. You look at him defensively as well. He's a more uh, combative player. I think they're different players. So I, I, I think they've got their three halfbacks. I think Cam Roygaard is going to make this squad. I'm, I'm chuckling already because I know what we're going to. We always look forward to Eddie Jones's press conferences. Well, Jeff, he had the privilege of chatting to Eddie Jones after this one. Eddie, I know you hate to lose, but in terms of taking a step forward, was that the performance you were looking for? And did you learn more about that group tonight? Well, that's, there's no cup rugby, isn't it? You know, you've got to go to the last minute of the game. Look, I thought we played exceptionally well the first 40 minutes, uh, put ourselves in a position to win a game. But these clowns over here, mate, I'm going to go over and, and have a chat to them because they're not, they're not good supporters, mate. Uh, and they should behave a bit better than that. Uh, which is quite disrespectful. It's disappointing because, you know, Dunedin's a good rugby city and you shouldn't have clowns like that behaving like that. But, you know, we haven't got the capacity to, to keep doing it for long periods and that's our problem. So we've got to develop that quickly, whether it's uh, a mental or physical, it's probably a bit of both. We know that. But certainly we've got a game good enough to trouble anyone in the world. They're not reflective of our city in terms of we have so much respect for you and your side. And I think you see that between these two teams. This team took a step up, though, and the way you wanted to play, particularly inexperienced players, you must feel good about where you can move to from here. Well, you never feel good after a loss, mate. I tell you, you never feel good after a loss. Uh, players are hurting. You know, I feel terrible. Um, but, you know, we are improving. We are a team with plenty of, plenty of potential and talent, but we've got to be able to do it for longer, you know. Test match rugby is about 80 minutes, and you've got to keep doing it. They keep doing the hard things. Congratulations, New Zealand. Yeah, they kept going, they kept contesting hard, and they got the result. You're going to keep working hard. Thanks for joining us after a game, which is a difficult, difficult result. But we look forward to seeing you at the Rugby World Cup. Thanks, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers. Oh, he's always good. I want to know, who are the clowns? Who are the clowns Eddie's talking I, about there? I can tell you, that was awkward. <laughs> when you're asking one question, all of a sudden, I didn't really want to look behind me, but clearly there were some fans who were doing something which were maybe we were a little bit disrespectful, which I don't, I don't like and, and appreciate. Made my job really, really hard going, maybe this is a one-question interview where I'm in and out. Look, um, you can tell he's disappointed, uh, but I think the biggest thing for Eddie is his challenge was selection coming into the season, it was knowing his players, understanding his players and what he's got. I think now with some of the talent he's discovered that starting to, he's starting to commit to, I think they're dangerous. You've mentioned it, Mills, on a number of occasions. You think with for where they are on their side of the draw and what I saw out of some guys, Angus Bell, I think is a really good loose head prop. Tom, Tom Hooper, which you had a chat to a little bit later on on the night, really respectful, We're classy discussing young man. red wine, actually. Discussing red wine? Well, he wanted to talk about tackling. I had no <laughs> idea what he was talking about there. Well, he does plenty of that. No, I, I thought he was really, really solid. I, I thought, you know, I felt sorry for Gordon. I was so happy he missed that kick. But that was a big kick, right? Carter Gordon. So Carter Gordon's kick was big. But this guy has been epic. 
He've, these, there's a few guys that have stood up on the side. When, when Eddie says they're getting better, I think there's three or four world-class players right now that are stepping up for them. And for me, um, they'll be the guys that need to continue to step up in the World Cup. Look how much they've improved in one week, right? In terms of where they're at, and what's still to come. It's, it, it's a long time over there to get yourself, get your game together. So they've still got plenty of time to keep building. But one thing is that, that we're seeing is he's, you know, that connection, we're talking about our nine and tens. You know, he, he hasn't had the luxury, he's had a captain that's been out. They've used four captains this year. You know, so where he doesn't have that luxury. So he's still trying to find that combination. But one thing for me is, that, like Bell, Bell's starting to step up. We haven't seen that from him before in his open game, but also Carter Gordon, the youngster. You know, he's young, he's starting to attack the line. So the more they grow in the more, then next few sort of weeks, They'll be a big threat, and considering the, the side of the draw they're on I'll too. I'll just say, we always talk about combinations, and all of a sudden, Fraser Wright at seven, Fetcher, genuine Fetcher, Valentini carrying the ball, and then they had Hooper pretty much doing everything else. You've got to love that. Those three together looked really good. We said in the pre-match that, you know, that Valentini is only half the player because his front five aren't going forward. But then yesterday they were going forward and he was coming off the back of the scrum mills. And, and so if they can get their game complete, and front row is their problem. I mean, they got pumped in the second half, but they lost another couple of props. In fact, I don't know why he came back on. It must have been HIA, but no one said anything. But, you know, if they don't sort their front five out, he's still going to have a long tournament but they're getting better. You talk about them being on the easy side of the draw, but in their pool, they've still got Fiji and Wales. Wales just beat England. Fiji just beat Japan. Can they make it out of their pool? Are you confident that they will be one or two? I'm confident they will. I think the Wallabies will come out. Fiji's going to be the big one for me, you know, and do they do they pick up the second one over Wales? I mean, I know the Wales, but they're still finding a few issues. It makes you know, that Wales side. So I, I think I think the Wallabies will go through. Wales may have won on, on the weekend. I, I read nothing into those results no. for those teams that are playing their first game in a long, long time. We'll talk about those a little bit later on, but yeah, they get out of their pool. It's Fiji, I think, they get out of their pool as well. I think it's Wales who are under threat. Fiji were really, really good last night for the second half I watched. They were Amazing. Just on Australia, they're naming their Rugby World Cup squad on Thursday. They've used four captains. Who is their captain for the World Cup? Do they keep Tate McDermott or do they go somewhere else? You, yeah. you, you liked him, JK? Yeah, I think they keep him. I think what, what's, what Eddie traditionally does, he very quickly gets rid of the players he doesn't like or trust. No opinion on whether yeah. he's right or not. And then very quickly he settles on his leadership group and he plays them, and he plays them, and he plays them. Um, and I think he'll stick with them for sure. I agree, absolutely. I thought you know, he showed great, like, great leadership, great composure. Um, I like some of the impact they had off the bench. I think they got that selection right. All of a sudden, Will Skelton, just for yeah, 25 or 30, yeah. he can have a bigger impact for them. Mm, well, the Rugby World Cup, as we know, is just under a month away now. So we're going to look at how all the international teams stack up. There were all these friendlies happening all over the world on the weekend. into the box, the box, with the cross kick, Moody's in position, Caden Moody's in. Wales just being reminded they have a penalty advantage, Kostler the attempt at the cross kick, there's Aaron Wainwright, Wainwright gets it away, there's Morgan, Morgan, he's got men around it, he maybe doesn't need them, it's on to Davis, and Wales get the first prize. After a second shot, Wales getting the second shot. And Russell for Dawson Grimm. Is this going to bounce for Scotland? Absolutely epic. And it doesn't matter that it's a France second team. No my hockey my welcome back into the breakdown. Well, there were Rugby World Cup warm-up matches all over the world. So who is in form and who's not? And how does the North and South compare, JK? Ask anyone from the North, they say their competition is hands down better. But what about the rugby championship? I think they're way closer, so things are closer from north to south. Um, I just want to get back to the to the Fiji versus Wales in the pool game. It's going to come down to who refs because, and I'm not talking about competency. I'm just talking about style. Wayne Barnes, one of our best referees, and he is. 
but he, he refs a little bit different to a Southern Hemisphere ref. It's just a little bit different. You know, he can be a bit more on the ground, lets a couple of things go that we don't let go in, in the Southern Hemisphere. So I think those little things are going to be important. Once again, it's not about competency, it's just about style. So if Fiji get a Southern Hemisphere ref, it's going to be easier for them because they're used to playing like that. So for me, the, the both hemispheres are really, really close. I think, um, you know, Ireland will be coming in with pressure. Um, England, no one knows where they are. Like, who knows? Who knows? And that's probably good for them. So the styles are way closer, but we still do have a different style. Well, some of these games, Mills, are important for some of these teams. So for a team like Scotland to experience a, a win against France is important. It wasn't a full-strength France side, though. The French had two or three of their key decision-makers and playmakers not playing in this game. So when I look at the balance of these results, particularly over the next few weeks and as they start playing each other, it'll be about when you see the number one squads going out there. But if you are Scotland, you're looking at getting this result and going, OK, we are winning, we're on top of our game. We're getting confidence into a game, remembering that their challenge is South Africa and Ireland. That's what they've got in their pool. So every moment they have like this is great for them. For other teams, it doesn't matter. Ireland weren't at full strength, got the job done. Italy did come back at them in the second half, though. So once again, it'll be a week-by-week -week proposition. Yeah, I totally agree. I think now coming into it, it's like a pre-season sort of yeah. mode. So they're just starting to get, once they start getting their teams together, you'll see a lot more consistency in, sort of, in terms of where they are. But it's totally different preparation compared to what the Southern Hemisphere teams are facing, right? At the moment, we're, we're, we're really trying to ramp things up to build up. They're probably a little bit conservative in terms of coming into the Rugby World Cup, which is a little bit different. Confidence, you're right. Confidence for the Scottish, for the Wales as well. well so. what, do you, what do you reckon's better, Mills? Because I keep hearing this from the Southern Hemisphere, we're going in a bit tired and they're going in fresh. But I think I'd rather come in off a hard competition. Yeah, we're playing, we were playing for trophies. Yeah, we yeah. played for the Bledisloe Cup, we played for the Rugby Championship, the Freedom Cup. I, I think for me, I look at that as being, I suppose when I say better preparation, we're probably a bit more advanced than that preparation. It's a matter of where our, and, and remembering, I think up until last night, we'd been really lucky, Kirsty, hadn't we, in, in regards to injuries. The fact we'd, we'd be able to rotate players in and out, give them guys some opportunities. Some players had a week off, nine of our starters had a week off, and so they'll now prepare for the naming tomorrow and then a test match. If we're honest, though, the world's best teams right now are in the North, Ireland and France, who we're going to come up against, potentially in the quarterfinals, Ireland. Why are we saying that Kirsten, well, if you, you just say at, that? If you look at the world rankings We're right number now, two, aren't we, aren't we? We're number no, two? We're number two now. We've okay, well, the best, the best team in the world right now is France. So, so you're telling us that these test matches have prepared us to play those teams? Totally. Chris, I think that... Like, uh, uh, have you ever done that, Mills? Like, have, have you ever, like, gone into it off a hard season? Because I never have. Yeah. We, so, I, is it better because you're harder, or...? I, I almost think it's the other way. Because when you're in these hard matches, is where do you taper off? You know, at what point do you taper off when you go to the World Cup during your pool games? Because while you're ramping things up over there, you know, quietly coming into it and getting... It's like, you know, super rugby, OK? Yeah, look, teams that sort of come through, by the end of the season, that they're, they're you know, ready to go, right? We're coming in, we have hard matches, hard matches, hard matches, then we have another one, then we sort of go into a test match where mentally, you know, we could probably, you know, turn off a little bit. And I think that, that makes it a little bit harder for us. If we're being realistic, it's, we've got this warm-up game in Twickenham against the Springboks, which is really, yes, you'd love to win. Uh, it'd be interesting the attitude they take into that. Yes. But ultimately, you're then looking at a game against France and then a quarter-final. You know, now I'm not taking for granted we beat Italy. We would expect to beat Italy, though. But we will play a strong side against Italy, probably our best team. You're really just talking about five games over the next three months. Mm. Hope they five play well, because otherwise games. my wife won't talk to me for a week. <laughs> that, not not the, probably the only reason. Yeah. So, I mean, I look at that over three months. We're talking five games. Yeah. So, so I don't think a, a conditioning's going to be an issue. We look, we look sharp, right? I, I think Mills is right. It's, it's tapering now. Mm. As coaches, um, and I've been to a couple of World Cup, you get, you know, you want to keep training. Yeah. You want to you yeah. keep, keep at them, and I think yeah. freshening them up. Um, I think the All Blacks get a week off next week. I, I think the Twickenham game is, is really, really interesting because do you actually play the team that's going to play? Because they get two weeks off. They're going to the Adidas factory. Um, you play your best team again because yesterday was a bit clunky and go in with a bit of momentum. It's intriguing. Uh, the, the Adidas factory is a high-performance unit. They're not just going shopping. Yeah, well, they're they actually are, going according to Mills. Oh, yeah, actually, That's what yeah. they're doing, they're shopping. Oh, yeah, well, that, that, back then they used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, these All Blacks that were picked in the Rugby Championship squad, they may be resting for the next week, but there's plenty of fringe All Blacks in action in the NPC.
Tog tries once more. Piano fakes up. Second receiver. Gridley. Vinicky. Tinkoi. Solomon. Here is Brunt with the ball in hand. Flicks it on quickly. Vahai looking to get around the outside. And she'll finish with class. Seven point margin is Hotham. Chips a nice ball over the top of the space. Spinner is tearing up. As they bring it in through Pawaraisa. Strong ball carrier, gets the offload away. That's what you want. You want to be running off each other's shoulders. Lovely hole. And the man on debut is heading for the line. He's going to get there. As off they move it through the hands. That's all right. That's all right. Here's a real flyer speaking off. Angelica Miki Miki behind. A little way, in and away. First touch for her. Rocket, shot ball. Bermuda Jensen. Yes, there's plenty of classy operators in action in provincial rugby right now, but you cannot go past the Tasman Marco who had David Harvelli at their service for 40 golden minutes. Jeff, is this guy on the plane to the Rugby World Cup? He's had a hamstring injury for the last nine weeks, and he didn't look like he missed a beat. Well, he's in a hell of a team, isn't he? I mean, Tasman is stacked. And I think that help has come back. Uh, the fact they, they look really sharp, he looks sharp. Although, the, the thing about David Harvelli is the fact that I know he's got a great work ethic. And when he does come back and return from injury, because he's had to do it a lot, it's there. And I, I looked at this and said, this was the perfect uh, reintroduction for him. Um, I think he's done enough just to show he's healthy, he's fit. They've invested in time over the last couple of years. Just nice to see him back out there. Yeah. He should feel comfortable tomorrow for a team naming, but you're never comfortable when those, those moments come around. Oh, he's here all day for me, yeah. you know, regardless. I think it's a conversation about, hey, just getting yourself right back and playing, you know, to get some confidence back into in, in your body. And look what he does. You know, he's gone out there and, um, and sort of delivered. So he, he was always on my list. Um, he's, just a, he's just a class player in terms of what he brings. His, his skill sets are um, outstanding in terms of kicking and, and passing, but also the, the physical stuff that he's really built around his game over the last couple of years, JK. Yeah, nothing to add. <laughs> just that probably look quite a lot into why he only played 40 minutes. For me, he's in. He's in. So they would said, get through, get out there, make your tackles. He made some beautiful, um, sharp angles early. Uh, I think he's one of those leaders. And guess what? Covers fullback. Yes. yes. And play everywhere. So is, clearly, is Stephen Pitafeta clearly our fourth first five? Is this he clearly? Year? If, for this, if, if, if we needed someone to come into this squad, given he's been there last year. 100%. They, it's, it's him, right? Totally. I, I, I don't see another option in that position. Totally. There's, there's going to be guys that would be going to the World Cup in any other country that are going to be home. He's one of them. Right? And I think he's going to be a big part of the future. Yeah. There's also guys like Hoskin Satutu, um, Ikira Ioane. You know, there's, there's guys that are home, Patrick Tupolotu, that might not make the side that need to stay fit and play well because they could be on a plane next week, week after. We continually talk about 2011. What we ended up getting it was Stephen Donald in the final of a Rugby World Cup. For me, Stephen Pettifit is the guy that we just need to make sure is continuing to play and is getting the feedback Playing he needs. Playing fullback for Taranaki. Yeah, but it, 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 for him, yeah, and I get that and understand that. Um, that's what they need, but I don't see an issue with that for me. He, his, his balance, his understanding of the game. Um, he's a real talent. He really is. You know, I, so I, I do see an issue for it. Only because what happened to Damien yesterday, how long it, it takes first lives now to mature to that the intensity of that test match. I'd rather him playing 10 if he is nice, our backup yes. 10. It would be preferable, but as long as he's out there, I'm happy. Now we'll just brush over the fact that Auckland beat Bay of Plenty just, so congratulations, JK. Time to Should move on. Draw? Time to move on. Don't go anywhere, because after the break, these three get their selection hats on. Yes, Ian Foster, Jason <laughs> Ryan and Joe Schmidt went to the Octagon last night for their selectors meeting. <laughs> Well, tomorrow it is make or break for the best rugby players around the country. 33 names we read out just after 5 o'clock. We will have the announcement live on the breakdown. It is a Monday breakdown special between 5 and 6 p.m. We'll have the team, the full reaction, and interviews live from the Hawks Bay as well. Before we go into the selection uh, meeting, are we going to argue here? Yeah, because I'm still really, really disappointed with both of these colleagues of mine. Like Mills was shocking at times. He took well, he the should, How, late, he took how the, late was he to the meeting? Yeah, he was late to the meeting, hey. firstly. <laughs> Secondly, he came in with cards and he wasn't showing anyone. But as soon as we said, you're Jason Ryan, he just cut me as the backs guy. 
late. Nathan Ryan's cool. Let, let's, let's do 2013 well, yeah. instead of 1914. I, I, I was siding with trying to get my selections well, in. Well, the first thing he said is, I've got the final say. So <laughs> <laughs> I did say that, to be fair. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so and, this team and, that we're about to see is Jeff's team. No, it's, it's not my squad. team. No, he won a few. We did decide that we're going to agree to disagree and commit. Okay. I don't well, think I'm you did even decide. decide. You did I'm probably not you going to, but anyway. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. This is the breakdowns 33 man rugby world cup squad potentially to be named tomorrow. The hookers, uh, that no surprises there really. Props, uh, these guys have picked five props, not six. To Mighty Williams does make the cut, and as well, Fletcher Newell. Uh, no Joe Moody and no Nepal Lalala in that mix. Uh, there are four locks. Have you gone four locks, not five locks? No, there's been a late addition because of the information that's come out today around... Josh Brody, Lord's added. Jo we've, we've brought Josh Lord into that <laughs> hey, conversation. Actually, hey, you brought I Josh, brought Josh Lord in. That was why I was sitting up in my room, because I knew he possibly <laughs> could be an injury. And that's, I had him in there. You, you kicked the mick out. So Josh Lord goes, is, so you've got But it wasn't blocks. a competition, Mills. You had to share that as soon as you got down to the meeting. Yeah, but but I, you don't keep that in. To, like it's... I wanted yeah, to tell you the rationale behind it because I know as soon as I said it, you guys wouldn't listen. And so, you know... We're listening now. Go on. Well, I had him because I thought, you know, Brody Retallick might be injured. And um, as it has ha happened, he is. I mean, one of the things going into it when we sat down is, is whether or not the balance was going to be 19-14 yeah. versus 18-15. And I think, I think this injury to Brody Retallick might have changed that balance. Yeah. The fact all of a sudden they feel as though they're going to need more cover for him. So, look, I think Sammy Penny Finau played his way into that. No Ethan Blackadder. Well, Ethan Blackadder's injured again. So you're just not considering him? Um, we considered him, whether He's or out. not we felt he'd be right. But I go and look at the balance of what else we had, JK. I think this is what they may take. This is the, the, the squad I would look at and go, these are the guys who have performed or they've trusted. And, you know, I think in terms of that, that forward pack, I'm really comfortable we're going to get everything covered. It was always going to be hard on one prop if you only took five. Yeah. Um, and it's Nepo La Lala. And, look, and, and like I say, this is our team. This is not the side that they're selecting, but we feel as though with enough versatility. Well, mainly your team. No, no. We have got versatility in versatility. there. I mean, the, and the locking and also the Lucy's. You know, I mean, Barrett's amazing in terms of sort of um, Scott Barrett in terms of you know, where he, he's seen as a lot but he also can play six you know Frizzell and Finau you see that before JK both yeah. similar players they can even you know go into sort of that locking so Jacobson sort of probably covers that number eight that was a big discussion point yesterday you know who covers that number eight yeah. um, you know uh, after sort of Artie but also Sam Kane can do it too yeah but we we did decide that you've got to you've got to start thinking about you know guys that will have to play in the final so we had that discussion, didn't we? Yep. If two sixes got injured, are you happy with Jacobson playing six or Papali playing six and Kane seven? And the answer was yes. Right? So the guys that you take to the World Cup, they might have to play in the final, so they need to be up for it. OK, well, that's your forward pack. Now, let's take a look at the backs that you've selected for the Rugby World Cup. Halfbacks, you've gone for the three that are already in there. No Brad Webber, he hasn't made it this time around. You've picked two first fives. Bowden Barrett's been selected as an outside back. Five outside backs there, and Moni Narua uh, does make the cut, even though he's got that back injury at the moment. So does Mark Talia and Lester Whanganuku. That's no Caleb Clark and no Sean Stevenson. Those are the guys you've left behind. And in the midfield, Dallas McLeod and Braden in or haven't made it, and David Harvelli is straight back in there. Yeah, the, we, like we said, we're comfortable where Finlay Christie has been at and what he's done. David Harvelli on the back of playing uh, this last weekend. The one around Amoni Narawa, though, the Amoni Narawa one, was the fact that he was running and training and was part of some contact last week. So once I learned that, that affected the way I looked at it. But Mills, you've still got room, maybe, yeah, about yeah. The, Dallas McLeod in the conversation. I, I just I like what Dallas bought last, yesterday in the, in the afternoon, and perhaps we might, they might. Not go with in? five Is outsides. He coming in for their I think yeah. Well, I think one of the outsides has got to be a, an outside back. With it's with it's. I mean. So who would be man. missing out? No one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we can't you know, make it. Because we're taking down 34. To. I, mean, I don't, I don't want to be a selector. You're saying, hey, this is where I got to. So I had to take right. control yeah. of the situation. Come on, have the last word because you want it. Because no, you had no, it last night as the, well. The biggest like. Um, when you go down the list of people that are missing out, Weber, Blackadder, Yuani, Satutu, Tupolotu, Joe Moody. La la la. In the backs for me, Caleb Clark is the saddest one. Yeah. Really and sad. And so, uh, like for me, I was happen. quite emotional about it as well because, um, you know, he's been playing. You're going to take a guy that hasn't played Mills, who's been a little bit injured, and that that would really, really hurt. So we're trying to, no, we're trying to get him in there. Who's that that you're talking about that hasn't Caleb, played? Caleb Clark. We, Caleb's playing. No, but we put no, we put uh, Narawa in there for him. Well, not I will play that first game and Yeah, Argentina. but he's been injured since, and Caleb's had a couple of games. So that, that's the hardest one. I'm not saying, like, 
you know, it's, it's just hard. It, it's, it's challenging, and, and it's not our job. It's their job tomorrow night. Well, it was your job yeah. last night, and all three of you, you've walked out friends after this? Absolutely. The, the silence yeah, right, says absolutely. it all. <laughs> the silence says it all. Tomorrow yeah. night, 5 p.m., live on The Breakdown, a very, very special breakdown show, a special announcement. The 33 players that will represent the All Blacks at the Rugby World Cup. It's going to be interesting to see these injuries. Brody Retallick, Braden Enor, who makes it, who doesn't. We'll see you tomorrow night. Every four years, the chosen few get a chance to become world champions. On Monday, we'll see who will represent the third. For some, this World Cup stage will be their first. This guy is a freak. For others, their last. Is this the greatest ever era?